Right, chip of the day. People love chip of the day. This is an MC1350. Um, popular chip for televisions and also used in a lot of radios. Um, it uh, goes up to about 45 megahertz, so great for HF equipment and things like that. It is an IF amplifier, all right? So it amplifies things, small signal, kind of medium signal kind of thing, right? Um, the cool thing about this is it has a, what they call an AGC, automatic gain control. Well, it's not really automatic gain control. It's a voltage, voltage controlled amplifier. And you could put it in a feedback. You could measure your amplitude and generate a DC voltage and bring that around. And you could turn it into an AGC, but it doesn't do it all by itself. So uh, let's see here. Let's take a look at um, let's take a look at the block not block diagram. There's actually a schematic, a simplified schematic. So let's take a look at that, and I think it'll help um, before we take a look at the uh, before we take a look at the applications. Let me zoom down a bit. All right, here we go. So it's going to look something kind of like an op amp. Let's ignore this for now. You can see that we have a, um, a long tail pair input, right? So it looks like the input of an op amp. And then we have um, uh, a, some bias circuitry in here. This is a, a current source. And uh, we have some uh, things here to allow the current in these upper sections here. That current gets modulating over here. And then um, it finally gets pulled off of. So if you simplify that, just think of there's just a tail and then two resistors. So there's two resistors here. And so you're going to have a differential voltage that either pulling down on one of these or pulling down the other one, there'll be a differential here. And there'll be a difference in the voltage here. And that'll be mirrored over to these two guys. So whatever thing is happening here, the teeter-tottering that's happening here, that teeter-tottering is going to happen over here. And there'll be some gain in this whole thing, current gain, voltage gain stuff. So so basically just think of, of, of the input just toggles these guys and the output toggles these guys. Now, so these guys are just going to, again, uh, be, you know, mirrors of each other. So you can imagine, again, you have a resistor and a resistor, and then you'll have wiggly over here and wiggly over here, and they'll, they'll be differential, okay? The way these things are normally used, though, is there's normally, instead of putting resistors in the collectors, they put a, uh, they put a coil. So let me draw that a little bit differently, because I think that's confusing the way they have it drawn there. Um, so you have basically these two, um, you have these two transistors that are going to go dunk, 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 right? Well, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to put a coil here and a coil here, and then you're going to put a plus V here, okay? And um, then you will have some current that runs back and forth here, some current that runs back and forth here, right? So that makes sense. But the way that these things are constructed, is that this is actually on a core, okay? So these guys put their magnetic fields into this core, and then that core is another winding that comes out. So you can imagine that these guys are bumping up and down, and that if this this is a transformer, and it this little winding here whacks up and down, and then you can just maybe put this to ground and, and something like that, right? All right, so that's what they have here. They have a, um, a coil. It's got a center tapped winding to plus V. Okay. So that's what I have here. It's a center tapped winding. Here's the center tap. Here's the winding. And then there's an output winding of smaller turns. And that's what I have drawn here. Okay. So that's what they have going on here. Um, all right. So then how does the AGC work? Well, the AGC is over here in the front end. And normally you would just have a, maybe a transistor here and a transistor here. You'd have these guys bopping up and down and then these guys bop up and down. And then there's these extra ones in there, okay? And these extra ones have a little control line. Off of the base of these two, it goes out to an output pin. And if you bias that output pin, what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn these guys on. And because they're in parallel with these guys, these guys will steal the current from these. So the higher the voltage you have here, 
the less this thing will amplify because you're going to just kind of quash some of the uh, uh, some of the signal. You're just you're just you're gonna you're gonna suck it away and it won't come out. So it's basically more volts is less gain. Okay, and so that's the way that thing works. Okay, so uh, I didn't want to wind a transformer, so I did this instead. All right. So this is my schematic. I'm going to bring it in to pin one, and um, this is my V uh, voltage um, input, just just 12 volts. Okay, so 12 volts is going to come in. It's going to go through this 500 ohm and capacitor. This is just power supply filtering. That's all this is. This is just a low pass filter to get off, uh, to make it nice and smooth. Okay, so that's what that is. All right, and then the output, like I said, I'm going to have, um, oops, I said that wrong. I have, I have drawn it backwards here. So the input's coming in this direction. I'm sorry, the input's coming in over here. So the input comes in through a 50 ohm load and then goes into the input. So this is the output over here. So the output's on pins one and eight. And I have a 1K pulled to 12, and I have a 1K pulled to 12. So that's my push pull. It's going to be whacking up and down. And I'm just going to pull it off of one side. So you'll get more, more gain. You'll get more voltage if you use the differential. I'm just going to pull it off of one side, and then everything will, be, everything will work just fine. So this is just a simplistic way to, to hook it up without a transformer. And it should work fine. Uh, I, this is my... Uh, AGC voltage coming in goes through a 5k resistor and a, and a little bit of filtering So when you change this voltage the gain will change the higher the voltage the lower the gain the lower the voltage the higher the gain So we'll give that a try So anyway, uh, that's what I have hooked up. Let's take a look at it All right, there it is a big mess um, so I'm going to be, uh, using the, um, Rigel as the input. So I'm going to be using its, uh, generator. I have five megahertz going in at uh, half a volt. So, uh, let's see, we can look at that. It's here on, uh, channel two. So channel two is the input and channel one is the output. So you see, we've got gain, right? So, um, let's see. I need to change the uh, times 10. These are both times 10 probes. Then the voltages will make more sense. Okay. All right, so one volt per division. Uh, we have a half a volt coming in and we have about uh, plus or minus two and a half or plus or minus one and a half volts coming out. All right, so that's looking good. Um, let's see. I don't think I said that right. What's coming in is actually plus and minus 100 millivolts because it's going into 50 ohm load. So it's my generator is dropping a bit. So we have plus and minus uh, we have plus and minus 100 millivolts coming in, and we have plus and minus one and a half volts going out. So that makes more that makes more sense. All right. Okay. So what about the AGC thing? Okay. And so I'm going to be using this power supply as my gain control. Right now it's at 4.6 volts. And if I raise that voltage, 4.8 volts, you can see uh, the gain went down. Okay. So gain up, gain down, gain up, gain down. So that's the way this AGC works. And if I go too high, too much gain, it starts to uh, distort the signal. Right. So if I the gain down to some, something around in here it's fine and then it'll finally distort so there's some amount of dynamic range this thing will handle otherwise it just rolls off so not a big voltage range to uh, change the change the gain and you'll see more complicated schematics that have a bunch of uh, inductors and transformers and a whole bunch of other things for filtering. And so, yeah, you can get fancier with these things. Most of the time when you see them used, it's with transformers and stuff. Uh, this one, uh, let's see, AGC input. And how do they get the output out of this one? Yeah, they're just pulling it off singly off of that one. That's interesting. Um, here's another one. 
Uh, here they're using a transformer. Uh, there's a bunch of tuning capacitors to, you know, make the thing operate better under certain conditions. I, so how did I choose the components? Well, they're my favorite components. This is what I have laying around. So if you just want to try something out, I, I, have, I had uh, five of these devices and I wanted to make sure that all five were, were good. Um, I just needed a quick circuit. So I just used everything I had on hand. They seem to be close enough. It probably won't run up to 45 megahertz, you know, or stuff like that, right? But it's certainly operating at 5, 10 megahertz just fine. So I'm using my 0.01s that I have a lot of. I'm using 1Ks that I have a lot of, right? So I have uh, 0.01s, 0.01s, 0.01, 0.01, 0.01, 0 0.01, so that's one uh, capacitor. Then I have a 1K, 1K, 500 ohms. I just put two 1Ks in parallel. And then uh, for the 5K, I just put two 10Ks in parallel because I have 5,000 of them, right? So I can just, I don't need to jump overboard to, to save components and stuff. I'll just use what I have. So yeah, two in parallel there, two in parallel there. And I did have to go over to my junk bin and find a 50 ohm resistor for the, uh, for the load. But that's not, that wasn't necessary either. I just wanted to have it. All right, I'm sure lots of people have used this chip. Uh, might want to comment below what you used it for. Um, tip of the day was an MC1350.